Hello, everybody. Welcome back <laughs> to our last uh, King Hunts yeah. video. It's uh, the so, end of an era. The end of an era. It was like an era. And there are still so many. I feel like there are still so many people we haven't covered, but maybe we yes. will just come back to it at some point. <laughs> yeah, we could do like a part two. Part two, season, maybe. This is season one, maybe season, season two. two at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, we should be looking at some other things as well. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to, to decide. I haven't decided actually yet what's going to be next. I like the idea with the Maroxi. Mm -hmm. But we are still, uh, I think, accepting um, ideas <laughs> for, yes. for the next one. So yes, today okay. we're going to see Topalov. We're going to see at some games of uh, Super GM. Bulgarian Super GM. Um, I have to say that I haven't found that many King Hands like I did, for example, with Mamediarov and with other people. Like, they aren't real. He's a, an attacking player, he's got many attacking games, but not exactly the, the same King Hands that we've seen. So, you're not going to see a King ending up on G1 or on B8. <laughs> okay, less can do. Yeah, but there are beautiful uh, attacks also. And we're going to start with some snapshots, some some exercises, some tactical ideas that I've found, and then we go. I'm going to show you two games that I've I've liked the most. So here it's white to play, white to play and win. Topalov with the white pieces versus Christopher Lutz in Dortmund in 2002. What do you think? What to do here? <sighs> Well, we're up already up a pawn, right? <laughs> so just exchange everything. No, okay. I mean, uh, then it wouldn't be included, I think, in this. Uh... Yeah, I haven't even actually uh, noticed that we were a pawn up. <laughs> so that's... Uh, yeah, so yeah, like... I, I it's... Wasn't... <laughs> but okay, like uh, something is going on in the B file and maybe it's not the best uh, way to go around. Um, I'm seeing some things like our looks are nicely put in the D file and um, I mean I'm just gonna see if something like knight e7 works hmm. uh, he cannot go to f8 because then he will be checkmated here right that's going to be checkmate that is going to be checkmate yes um, so he cannot go there uh, then he can go to h8, or he can go to h7. Mm. Oh, 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 now I get it. It's, it's, it's queen f8, right? No. Sorry, what? Wait. Queen f8? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get just, excited about that? I, I just saw a motive because the king can't take an f8, because then uh, rook d8 would be a very nice uh, checkmate. But of course, you can just take with the rook on the face. But there's and also a knight on d5. Yeah. So then we would have to play this first. But may then we're blocking the the <sighs> queen. Yeah. Then we're blocking the queen. It doesn't make any sense. And if we go here, he goes here. Then I don't know what we have. We can't really get anything on that diagonal. I think I'm going to look for more candidate moves. Yes. Um, and we are also looking just... at the chat so if you guys have any suggestions yeah 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 yeah, that would be nice uh <laughs> greetings from germany happy hunting thank you that's a good <laughs> thing to say actually happy hunting um yeah <sighs> okay candidate move candidate move candidate move just to get the queen in um <sighs> I really feel like it's a knight move to get the rooks into action. I haven't looked that much, much at knight f6. Knight f6 makes sense because he can't move the king hmm. anywhere. So he has to take it. That's like, okay, it's forcing if nothing else. <laughs> uh, then we could go rook here, rook here. Rook takes king h7. And then the question is if is we can like join the queen on f8. But yeah. I'm not sure if we've just sacrificed too much and the king can maybe just escape. Doesn't look uh, entirely... Oh, well, wait. 
Yeah. The king maybe can escape because there's a pawn and then we play g4 at some point maybe. I'm going to look to see if there yeah, is Yeah, you, you do have a chat, suggestion in the chat. What is it saying? Ah, it's because Miguel is uh, French, I think. So you're saying Cavalier? <laughs> uh, no, he's actually... Okay. Uh, he, no? That's in, Span in Spanish. Ah, it's is caballo. it also Cavalier there? It's Caballo. <laughs> ah, okay. It's Cavalier in French. Okay. So knight f6. I was like, what is d? Knight f6, g6, f6, rook d8, the rook h7. I don't get rook eight. Ah, king eight. King ah, h7. Okay. That's king eight seven. Okay. No. And okay. d. That's a queen. That's a dama. <laughs> that's a queen. Okay. That's the same in Danish, so that I understand. Uh, f eight, king g six, and then g four. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's something uh, that you were looking at as well. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Knight f6 works. Nice to see you, Pirush. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'm just going to see if the Twitch have any has any. Drew Pell on Twitch has it as well. Knight f6 yeah. and then check on, on the 8th. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do follow the chat, but there's not there wasn't a lot on the chat here. <laughs> we were just uh, we were just looking at both YouTube and, and Twitch. Yeah. It's okay, Miguel. We understand. In between the two of us, I think we, <laughs> we got it. <laughs> <laughs> With a little help from the Luca. Yeah. But now Sophie has learned the notation in Spanish, so that's another thing that she learned today. <laughs> yes. Always learned something new. So knight f6 does work. Um, yeah. As you pointed out earlier, if the king moves away, then rook d8 is made. When the, uh, when the knight was on e7. So g takes f6, rook d8. You guys were looking at this idea. King h7, queen f8. King g6, and here you are suggesting g4, which I think is very strong as well, because you want to checkmate already yeah. on g8. That looks strong. I like this g4 idea. Keep the king stuck on the g file and then queen g8. There is no way black can defend, is there? I don't think so. I mean, maybe then there's something... Uh... Oh, maybe you can take with the bishop and play queen h1. No, I think we just go to b2 and then it's... But That's you, don't, you don't have to take the bishop. If bishop takes, you can still go queen g8, I think. Uh, and then take, take with only the next move. Yeah. yeah. That seems convincing. He played yes. queen g8 immediately, and that's also good. Can I show the line? Uh, the one with g4, you mean? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's look at this one as well. g4. Um, bishop g4. Uh, I was saying queen g8. Seems to, to do. King f5 here, this should be checkmate. King e5, where's the checkmate? I don't have queen e4. I have a check on d4. Another check on d5. But I mean, uh, now we're not even behind in material. No, no, we're <laughs> not. We're just trying to, to checkmate yeah. the king on e5, but it should be there, right? <laughs> what about checkmate? F f4 maybe? f4 maybe, yeah, as well. Oh, and right, yes, f4 goes, wins yeah. the queen, yeah. Oh, yeah, then queen g2. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Let's just get the queen and then we'll checkmate. Yeah, this is yeah. nice. <laughs> so g4 wins. Anything else? f5 looks like another option to get king f6. But I don't think I'm, I'm getting anywhere. Check here, king f6. So what now? Check on h8 looks tempting. I believe king e7... Is kind of forced because if king back then rook g8 is checkmate so king f8 oh can you refresh the board i'm sorry can you see it yeah now i can see it so f5 queen, queen g8 king f6 mm. here this also looks like checkmate and a few more moves there yes and also just the queen uh, is hanging on b7, so probably there would be like motives where we could hmm. win her somehow. Win the queen. Maybe. Yeah, I'm thinking a check here and a check on h6. Yeah. But I don't see Oh, and then being... a check on, on g5? Oh, then, no, then he plays f6. Hmm. You can give a check on g5, f6. Oh, and then you win the queen. You're right. We do. We do. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so bishop f7 maybe, but then probably rook f8. 
I think Rook of Fate. A queen, queen of Fate. Yeah, Queen, queen of, of Fate, fate yeah. and Rook. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That looks good here, Queen of Fate. It's amazing how this king uh, still survives, King E6. But he can't still go for <laughs> long, right? And no, I don't D6 think so. And no. No, Rook D6, maybe Rook D3 and taking on F5 is also an option. I feel like in a blitz game, this could go both ways. <laughs> yes, and I see uh, and Swiss Drupal is asking you if you would find this solution during a classical game of yours. I would probably find knight f6, but I wouldn't see so far for the, for sure. No. I would just say, oh, this should be checkmate, and then we'll see if we find it. <laughs> I mean, I think this is not... Mm, I know I was looking at uh, uh, knight e7 first, mm. but it's, it's a pretty forcing line. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if you just know that it's something you should be aware of, it shouldn't be one of those uh, like crazy, crazy hard things to find. No, I think if you see in a game, you see up to here and... Uh, and you just go with it, you right? You just go with it, yes. <laughs> and Queen G8, the way he played, maybe this is even easier. King H5. But now you have to find this amazing move, Queen G7. Ah, oh, okay. That is preparing probably a move I wouldn't have uh, found. Quiet move, yeah? Yeah. It's nice because if you play g4 immediately, then um, the king can escape. On g4, king h4. Uh, yeah, and then then he goes to h3 and, and g2. <laughs> and then maybe it is a king hunt. <laughs> it is a king hunt, but maybe not a hunt because uh, there are no, no. more checks. But queen g7, you kind of keep the king stuck on h5. And then you want g4 and queen takes h6. Yeah, and that would be checkmate. That would be checkmate, yeah. So here black goes for f5. And now another move. I like this kind of moves that keep the king stuck there. Keep the king in the danger zone. Yeah, rook d4. In the box. Mm -hmm. And the threat is rook h4 now. And checkmate on h6. Oh, yeah, yeah. So black goes uh, bishop c8. <laughs> and another move, g3, preparing the checkmate on h4. Uh, yes. <laughs> very nice game, especially the end. Is very, very nice, the way he keeps the king on h5. Huh? Can we just go... Oh, the rook is... Uh... Yeah, now I get it. <laughs> I was oh, just you mean wondering here. why, yeah. yeah, why it didn't work now to play rook h four, but I just missed that the, the rook is now covering h six after bishop move. Yeah, that was the point yeah. of bishop c eight. Open yeah. the rook and really defend h like, six. Oh. At least not get made yeah. right away. That's what Black said here. <laughs> yeah, f five saves the day. I don't think f five saves the day. It just prolongs the the suffering. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Where is Sergei Karyakin? No, we don't have Sergei Karyakin here. <laughs> we have Topalov today. But we do have a game against Karyakin. So we're, we're going to see that. So moving on. I have another um, exercise here. White to play. Ah, come on. Black to play, I'm sorry. So I'm going to flip the board. This was also a rapid oh, game, I sorry. have to Black say. Black to play? Black to play, yes. Uh, this is Grishchuk versus Topalov in the Rapid World Championship. So it's black to play. What would you do here? Uh, do you think Topalov saw the whole line when he played Knight of Six? I think he did. I think, I he, think did. He, saw... he must have seen the yeah. the Queen G8 and Queen F8 and Queen G7 idea. Yeah. yeah, because otherwise I think he would have also seen G4. So I think if he didn't play g4, then it was because he saw the other line till the end. Yeah, probably. Um, what would I play? Does it make any sense to take an e4? I think it does, right? Taking an e4 is almost a fork. Almost. But the rook can take. <laughs> but then we play f5. The rook, oh, then the rook takes an on e5. On e5, then it doesn't work. Hmm. Um, okay. 
Mm. I mean, I'm also looking at F5, but again, E5 is... <laughs> I have to, I don't think it would be nice with the knight coming to e5. Uh, what is there that's like more violent? We could take here. You could But I'm that. kind of missing p uh, pieces. <laughs> How do you call them? That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, oh, what do I call it? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's my problem here, that it's really only right now the bishop and the knight that are active. Trupa um, has an idea with knight h3 and then f5. What do you think about that? Knight h3, g takes h3 and f5? Yeah. But, oh, no, I don't get it. <laughs> Is it too... <laughs> mm, because, okay, let's say that he takes here with this knight. Mm -hmm. Then what do I I could take here. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. Uh -huh. that's and then very... I don't have three. And then the queen is joining on g5. Maybe we take the knight at some point, or we win the knight on f3, and then the queen is joining. Yeah, something oh. like that. It's not winning, I have to say. Knight h3, just ah, okay. speculation. Yes, exactly. Like it's just speculation. It's a line. With this, I wanted to show you how he he's complicating different positions, how he goes for the most complicating lines. Just, uh, no, don't... Because knight e6 is a move here as well. If you if you want to, to make a move, there's nothing wrong with knight e6 coming back. But knight h3 is the most complicated line. So it's White not winning, to... but it's also not losing. It's not losing. It's, uh, okay. you know, you know what it is. Complicated. It's a, it's a draw. <laughs> it's zero, zero. Draw. Zero, zero. <laughs> Always, yeah. It's always zero, zero. No, but in, especially in a rapid game, it's easier to play with black in this position than with white. Yeah. <laughs> Speculate, don't calculate it. <laughs> yeah, knight h3 goes, uh, you have to go with your your feeling as well. If you see the idea of f5, I think this shows that there is enough compensation. You just see that you're going to get the knight next and you've opened the white king. So you're not going to be behind material. And you're obviously going to have attacking chances. No, why not go for it? Yeah. He took here and e4. 95 takes here. And here white should have taken on f3. But I was looking at this line and I was thinking that knight f3 looks, uh, looks very scary. I just pinned myself once again. Yeah, like queen d5? Exactly, yeah. Queen d5 looks like the move here. And you're pinned, but it seems to be nothing. Just rook e3 and the knight's defended. And uh, c4 is coming next. Maybe this is what, what white missed in, in the calculation. That the queen yeah. is not going to stay for too long on d5. If rook e8, for example, c4. Yeah, and then white gets some space at least and... I think just getting the queen out of the pin is enough here. Yeah. <laughs> I would be happy if I if I get to play queen d2 with white. Yeah. Of course, the king is still open, but there's nothing uh, happening. No, and it's a pawn up for white for now. Definitely compensation here. But white goes queen d2, which shows that the, the position was quite... Uh, difficult to assess yeah. and after queen h4 white black is winning queen h3 is a threat there's just no way of uh, defending that if you place uh, king h2 it's not if king h2 hold on a second king h2 what do we do maybe bishop g4 yeah bishop g4 looks good let's show this king h2 I'm thinking bishop g4 here Knight g4, f takes g4, and I renew the threat. And there's, there's nothing... really no way of dealing with that. No, nothing to do. Checkmate. Yeah. He played queen d3, preparing queen f1. But of course, this mm. leaves g5, so unattended. So this happened in the game. And then checkmate on g2. 
Okay, let's move on to to the real deal now. <laughs> the real deal. The real the, deal. The yeah. White. Uh, we're going to see Topalo with white here. And this is a game against Ponomaryov. Oh, sorry, Raluca. Uh, Drupal is just asking if you know uh, oh. what uh, opening this was. Mm, uh, I'm maybe not sure, but I will check. I'm not sure. I was just looking at the tactic, but I can can look and see while you think about a follow up here. Try to to find oh, yeah. a plan for white. It's white to play. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's to follow with the white pieces. Yes. So okay. it was, what was this? It was a Sicilian, it was a Rosolimo. That's uh, tricky to play against. <laughs> I think with the, with, the, uh, with the black pieces, I really don't enjoy meeting, uh, playing no? against the Rosolimo, no. <laughs> um, okay. So how would you play this position? Let's find some plans here for white. I'm just trying to like evaluate what's going on. Uh, <laughs> material is completely equal. Uh, both players have the bishop pair. Mm, I don't know if I should be worried about something like d4. <laughs> Might be a little bit annoying, but on the other hand, then maybe I can like move the rook and then go bishop e4 uh, but it just seems like the position could get a little bit cramped after that mm. of course there's castling but i'm not really sure if it's too like airy on the king side um maybe we shouldn't castle maybe we should go for something like this and just attack <laughs> And the, because, okay, if black goes d4, which is what I was slightly worried about, yeah. the bishops would still be good. The bishop in d3 and d2 would still be uh, very like active, shooting down uh, to black's king side. So it would only be the rook and c3 that would A little suffer. awkward, yeah. Uh, that would be a little awkward. And maybe we could, like, it could, I mean, the rook and a8 is also quite bad, so um there are some other ideas here yeah bishop h7 king h7 queen e2 wait what what i think that's two <laughs> <laughs> then there's something like uh knight g5 there is if an idea with a knight g5 that <laughs> This was nicely put. We need to sack the knight on g5, but not sure when. Yeah, it's ah, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was thinking that g5 as well. Yes, yes. And I. Uh, but Sophie, just, uh, the weakness in black's position. Yes. Wh where is it? If you're trying to attack the king side, where exactly is black okay, uh, loose? Two points. H7, I think more than g7, no? Because you have the bishop already pointing at h7. Yeah. How can you use that? I mean, we could go. No, can't go queen c two. That's uh... no, but you don't want the queen behind the bishop. No, you? no, no, no. But I mean, where can I really get? Okay, so I want to have the queen on. There's not really room anywhere in this time. No. Okay, of course, <laughs> if black goes d four, then we could get the queen to e four. Um, but then we could go knight. Okay, I'm just gonna look at knight g5 because knight g5, and then <laughs> the queen goes to h5. And uh -huh. if you go, unless we want to take first, no, let's just see queen h5. If he plays here, then we sacrifice some more. That looks good, right? Then we take here and open up for the rook and it's checkmate. That's a lot of arrows. That's very confusing, sorry. But I don't have okay. to take, this is... You don't have to take on g5, you No, mean? I don't have to take on g5, no. Well, then if you don't, <laughs> then I'm going to put my... Ah, uh, okay. So we play bishop b1 then. So and you then play then we bishop go b1 like this then. instead. Yeah, that's what you... Okay. How okay. your attack goes here. Bishop b1. 
And oh, and I see people C2? have it on, on YouTube as well. Yeah, there were many uh, suggestions of Bishop B1 yeah. and Queen C2. Yeah. This is the most common way of getting your queen on the on the diagonal. Just drop the bishop back and the queen goes in front. If you don't have the queen e4 idea that was suggested <laughs> as well, yeah. then you can do it this way. Uh, the move yeah. that you are... Sorry. It's, uh, I, I sometimes have a hard <laughs> finding the moves where you Backwards. take the pieces back. I yes. think it's a common like blind spot to have. It is, yeah. yeah. It's not easy for anybody, I think. Uh, the move that you are looking at castle is also possible, but maybe d4 is something that yeah. can be I don't annoying. like castle very much, actually. No, you don't. Huh? No, Nine because seven. I want to keep the option open about uh, opening the h-file, like playing d4, g5, and knight g5 at some point. I can understand that, yes. Yeah. Bishop g1, bishop b1. So here, I think this is already a very difficult position for black. Queen to c2 is coming next. And I can see why this starts to become uh, annoying no? for black. How, because how would you defend if queen c2 next? If g6, there's h5. Oh, and the pawn on h6 is oh, also yeah. hanging. Um f5 wouldn't help because you take with the pawn and the queen is still open. So here black decides to go f5 immediately. Uh, but it seems that this is not the best defense. The best defense seems to be knight d7. But still, white has a lot of pressure. The point is that now after f5, takes now he takes with the knight. Mm. But what would you play here with white? Take a moment to think. I mean, now maybe the uh, knight g5 idea is more of a threat because e6 is hanging, so may maybe black could uh, defend it. But or maybe we take an h6 and go queen g6. Stop people yeah. going for the attacks, definitely. Don't we do that? <laughs> I think we do that because then the knight can jump to g5 afterwards. That seems completely winning. Finally, the knight gets to yeah. jump on g5. Give yeah. a check here. King h8 and knight g5, winning. Ah, yeah, we'd only even take an, an, an h6 first. Ah, you could take if you want. Yeah. If, you're, uh, if you want that pawn. But this is not possible because you'd open the rook. Mm. So the threat is now, what is the threat now? Queen h6 and bishop h7 is the threat. King g8 and bishop h7. Yeah. So here bl uh, black should not take this bishop on h6. There is knight e4. But again, a very difficult position because at this point you don't have to move the rook away. You just bring the bishop back. And it's definitely not easy still, no? No. And now we're now we're up a pawn. <laughs> <laughs> now we're up a pawn, yes. And the, the yeah. black king is still open. If queen a5, we can defend the rook with bishop d2. And the rook is still untouchable because there's a queen h7 in the air when the knight takes. But here black survives basically in the game after f5 bishop b1 f5 takes bishop f6 queen c2 black goes d4 thinking that the rook is trapped on c c3 probably uh but how would you continue now <laughs> all this for a pawn yeah all that for a pawn <laughs> in the previous yeah but um... you could have gone knight g5 so there you have it, just an idea. <laughs> there was a checkmating idea at some point. I mean, taking an... Okay. So we have to calculate, oh. Let's calculate this, so we have to calculate <laughs> this. And, okay, we don't And I, I like the. I like the persistence of 9g5. You, st you have to calculate 9g5. 9g5 also. <laughs> also. Okay, 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 okay. 9g5 um, is an idea that is there, so don't... Oh yeah, that's true, because 9g5, then he doesn't have the f7 square. So now it's probably the time where it's the most uh, threatening, right? Because if he takes the book now, okay, it's checkmate. Hmm. And if he doesn't take the book, 
if he plays something. I don't even know what he should. Okay, so he take. Uh, he takes, then we take back, open up this rook, and if he then takes our rook, then okay, it's a little annoying that he also gets to take and if he also gets to take on d two. Why not queen h seven? We have a question uh, from well, Nishik. queen h seven. Yeah, is... queen h seven is definitely. Definitely very much then. worth of uh, consideration, but I just, I'm afraid that the king will hide. That's the difference. Uh, the king will actually not escape, but I will show you that okay. line as well. Queen h7 works, but knight g5 also makes a lot of sense because you want to keep the king stuck. That's the point of knight g5. Yeah. Knight g5 is what Topalov played. So let's see queen h7 first, since it seems to be the most natural move here here and now you can take this this pawn here on h6 yeah that's and then if it takes the book uh we just have to be careful not we just to have to be a little bit careful about moving the knight you have a check here you can take here it is winning but i think king d6 yeah, it's not so easy to evaluate this you're not you know you're winning but it's like in this in the other position that you know it should be checkmate but you don't see it just yet you keep playing yeah i think it should be easily winning though castle here and uh, get rook d1 you finally castle yeah and the king can't really okay if the king goes then we get maybe the knight and so we can always play uh um if, if I was thinking if the king tried to go to c6, then we ah. would at least have uh, bishop e4. Yeah. To just win some material back and yeah, have that's, a nice position. That's precisely yeah. the point, yes. If king c6, yeah. bishop e4. That's why I actually chose uh, knight d7 in this position. And yeah. hide on c7. And here knight e5. Black the knight on, on d7 is really pinned. <laughs> it's really pinned, yeah, both yeah, ways. <laughs> Bishop c8 is also there. And queen e5. And now if king c8, then we want to take on c5. Uh, king b8. And at this point, the fun part about this position is that this queen on d8 is stuck. Uh, she needs to keep the rook defended. So here here bishop e4 this is over <laughs> yeah the rook is lost because if yeah. rook e8 then you go back or queen c5 yeah, yeah queen c5 yeah go back to c5 oh and yeah then, yeah then the rook needs to uh, queen needs to leave and you take on f8 but it's definitely a, a long line no something that i don't think you'd be able to calculate and see no, it would From be like the... just one, two moves at a time <laughs> trying to get there. Yeah, you just see that uh, yeah. you probably see until something somewhere here, king d6. And you think that, okay, this is a great position. I can play this and mm. maybe find castle. I think queen e5 also works. So you have many moves here. Uh, but if you don't want to let the king escape, then knight g5 is a very strong move. It's actually the strongest in this position. And it was what he played, right? It is what he played, yeah. Knight yeah. g5 was... The position was begging for knight g5, right? Yes. Uh, I think the chat uh, will agree to that. <laughs> Why not take rook d7 before? Uh, sorry, when? I think... Was there a moment where rook d7 was possible? I believe... Hold on a second. After rook d1... At some Somewhere point. here, no? Yeah. Could we have taken on d7? I don't... I don't think Only so. Only once. Rook d7, queen d7 because here? the other rook is defending f8. Yeah. Oh, well, I think I, it was after maybe the queen took on c5 the first time. The first time the queen went to c5. Ah, you uh, mean, yes. You could have done it, but it would still be... Ah, you can take on d7, it. sure, yeah. But it's... Um, I mean, then we're down an exchange. I mean, we're down a full book, so you should be careful about 
but I think it's winning business. because then Probably. bishop e4 is coming that's the yeah. point the rook on a8 is really really a bad piece yeah yeah this is the point if king b7 bishop e4 this is also winning definitely uh, yeah oh, you have so many ways of winning here <laughs> yeah that was just the one that I had here after the check on b4 definitely you can take on d7 uh, but knight g5, let's see this line, because this is what you wanted to see. Takes, takes, and here d takes c3, right? This was what you were looking yes. at in your calculations. And now he um, plays another elegant move, I think. After d takes c3, we have many ways of winning. Of course, we can give a check on h7 and another check on g6. Or we can give one on h8. And we can give one in h8 yeah. as well. <laughs> yes, that's a good point because if king takes, there's queen h7. And then there is this move, this quiet move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bishop f4, which keeps all the threats. Uh, queen g6 is coming next. We see that he's really trying to, to keep the king on g8. He's not, he doesn't want to allow the king to escape. Queen g6 and then yeah. rook h8, that would be checkmate. And if the king goes to uh, f7 now? If the king goes to f7 now, you go queen g6. Okay. And let me show you the line that we were talking about previously. If king g8, rook h8. Mm. And this is the checkmate that Sophie was hoping to give. <laughs> <laughs> and if king e7, everything just comes with check here. g takes f6. I think this is where... Uh, Black actually resigned, I think, after queen g6. But this is how the game would go. Queen g7. And another check here. Yeah. And now take everything. We have a very similar position to the one before. But... Oh, no, no. This was actually played. Yeah, sorry. This was played in the game. Rook h7. Yeah, I mean, it's still, I mean, it looks completely winning, but I mean, I understand that Black would just want to play on a few more moves to, uh, I mean, as long as to Black is check. up in material, right? A, yeah. re a revenge check, a spite check. <laughs> King of one, now here. And then here comes the checkmate. This was the most king hunt that we will see for today. A oh, king. that's a nice, that's a, a nice uh, final move. Because if queen e4, then queen c7 yeah. is made. A beautiful ending, yeah. Yeah, really. Uh, a king that traveled all the way from g8 to, to b6 and back to c6. And the last game that I want to show you, I think, uh, well, it's my favorite. It's Topalo with the black pieces. I think this is the most impressive. Come on. Black pieces? Black pieces, yes. You know what? I think this is uh, the most black pieces we have had in yeah. uh, Usually they make all the beautiful games with the white pieces. It's, it's refreshing to see that they can also play nice with... And of course, they can play nice, but that they don't just draw with the black pieces. Or they don't just win long positional games. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's what you mean, yeah. You can also attack with black. It's okay. Yes. <laughs> it's a way to be aggressive. Okay. It's okay to be aggressive with black. Um... Okay, so... Yeah, let's start from this position. Um, well, I chose to start from this position because it's it's a position where white seems to be doing fine. And it's a position where we need to figure out if we can take on d4. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> either it should be now or maybe then white will have time to like make sure that it won't happen. Um, well, actually, white wants to play a 4 here. Yes. Get more space. D6 is one of the targets, but basically it's very difficult with black to get the pieces out. They are cramped. Where do you get the bishop out from C8? What are you going to do with the rook from A8? It's very difficult to untangle um, the pieces. Uh, bishop G4 is solving both of those problems. I mean, it's getting rid of the bad bishop <laughs> and G8. And it's making room for the for, for the, the rook. rook. Okay, <laughs> I'm like la half laughing because I don't know if it's just a terrible move or if it's actually like a good move. But it, but it's definitely. I mean, we do get two pawns. Uh, we do maybe. get two pawns and an open king, so it should be. 
um, considered. Was this classical chess? This was classical chess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Was no, maybe uh, in more... an Olympiad, I think. No, it's no. it's in the knockout world championship. It, it, okay. Because if it's if it's in the Olympic, then you also have your teammates to think about. So then you have to be a little bit more. <laughs> careful with these things well okay. uh, i can't really I... figure out if we have uh, if this makes any sense um i can't see anything concrete but no it it's not it's does... nothing <laughs> concrete here nothing concrete okay i'm gonna look a little bit for other uh, candidate moves so the it's a good point that okay we need to do something about these pieces um and yeah about the f4 idea so e6 if... and bishop a6. Bishop e6 is another move that's being suggested. Of course, yeah, these are all possible moves, but yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. f4 then, right? Yeah. It's, it's very uncomfortable. And b6, isn't your queen trapped on b4 at some point? I would be very worried about my queen on b4. <laughs> <laughs> so many things to uh, consider here. Okay. Um, I can, okay. It looks really ugly. I'm just going to see if it has any ideas because then the idea should be to go knight, knight to g6 to maybe h4 and it does. I don't know if it stops entirely f4, but then at least he can go f5. Uh, get a pawn there. Um, I understand your idea. Yeah. Yeah, I understand the idea of g5. It makes sense, I think, in this position. It does look like a move that you probably don't want to play because you leave f5, but... Yeah. Um, this is just in do. the thinking phase. Um, is there any other way to stop f4? Then we just need to have a good plan with the knight. I mean, the knight... The knight is just not very happy on f7 because we can't go to h6. Or g5 once the pawn is in f4. Hmm. Um, I, I think th I'm going to look in the chat now. I'm, I've been looking enough for this. I think your g5 uh -huh. idea makes a lot of sense, but I think we can agree that the position is still very uh, ugly, right? Yes. Very difficult to play. So I <laughs> exactly. To, what I wanted to show you with this, uh, from, with this position is that uh, it's his ability to complicate things because here he understands that he's worse and if he just plays normal moves he will be worse and worse and that's why it will be the one uh, putting more pressure so here he goes for the complications h5 what about ah. h5 yes h5 just somebody had as... h5 that's good job <laughs> right now just as i played h5 i saw it in the chat what about h5 uh. um, um... and what if f4 right yeah yeah Okay, but let me show you first what happens if g takes h5. It's probably the last thing you'd be worried about in this position, but what would you play with black if g takes h5? I would take on h3. You would take on h3, yes. Yeah. And the bishop's suddenly very happy. The point is that bishop h3, there's knight f3 yeah. winning the queen. Yeah. That's it's a family tactic. check. A if... family check. <laughs> family check, because it's also... Uh threatening the book right isn't that royal fork yes it's also called also royal, royal fork, fork yeah? <laughs> yeah and if it takes here well here it's we're getting enough yeah complications looks... from where we've started so g takes h5 is not the move that we're worried about but f4 is what do you think he 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 played here I still don't like knight on f7. No, you don't. And I also don't like the knight on d7 because it's blocking the bishop and it mm. doesn't really have anywhere good to go from there. So I think we just have to, <laughs> to give it up. forget about the knight, uh, right? <laughs> get about the <laughs> stupid knight. Um, maybe pawn takes g4 because then if he takes a knight, we take an h3 with the pawn and... Um... Hmm. And you are getting some counterplay there. And, the, and the bishop has to be careful about where it goes because f3 is no f3 is not a problem anymore but not anymore no the stupid knight, the knight you see, <laughs> you're talking badly about the knife but your knight was an <laughs> asset <laughs> i'm missing it now 
Um, I'm gonna, just going to see if there are any B5. Uh, family Forge, yes, exactly. Um, B takes G5. Bishop takes G4, probably. Ah, Bishop takes G4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bishop takes G4. And then we're sacrificing. The no, we're not sacrificing <laughs> two pieces. Because, okay. Well, here you're yeah. definitely thinking about something takes on G4. Pawn takes G4. Makes sense. Topalov yes. chose the stupid knight, as Sophie calls it. <laughs> <laughs> I like my knights in, in general. Um, oh, and sorry, I just see a uh, grown-up man ask if I have a feeder uh, rating. I have a feeder rating. It's barely 1800, but I'm a bit higher rated online. So yeah, looking forward to waiting for the moment to play real chess, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and get a real rating uh, up. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe, but I think I feel like everybody has just been playing online during quarantine getting their rating mm. ups. Yeah, okay. Um, takes? I mean, he takes with the bishop. Yes. So you're a piece down for only two pawns, but it's it's not so so easy to play with white. If you take a moment to, to think about this position and try to find a way for white to break through, you'll see that it's not so easy. No. I was I was looking at this position and wondering, but how am I going to get my pieces in the game? The knight on e2 is pinned. I don't have that much freedom of movement with white. It should be winning. You know that it should be winning, but how are you going to win this? <laughs> so it's suddenly Can becoming... white try to just exchange some pieces, like taking on c5 and... But of course, then black takes back with a check. But then, no, then queen d4 would maybe be, I don't know, I th like trying to exchange pieces. Trying to exchange pieces is a good idea here, but is bishop c5 really a good I don't know, move? maybe it's a bad idea because uh, the dark square is a little bit vulnerable, but... I'm thinking, okay, if queen c5 you want queen d4, I understand that, so maybe... I'm wondering if taking with the pawn is also... Maybe, but then the queen is just having... I think rook queen d8. E4 is not the best. Is this best for white or is it 0, 0 or... No, it's not. It's like plus 4 here for white, but ah, you okay. don't you don't really feel it. No, we don't have the, the position. <laughs> we don't have the computer during the, during the games. No, I have seen this uh, before. And looked at the, this position. Yeah. Uh, bishop c5. I like taking with the pawn though here on c5. Because I want to open my bishop and have the idea of pushing c4 myself later. Yeah. And getting the other bishop in. So I want this maybe and maybe this. And the bishop comes in. Are you playing something on the board? Oh, you don't see it? Sorry. No. <laughs> oh, okay, I was yeah. just drawing arrows here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thinking about c4 and the bishop on c5, dreaming, daydreaming about when the bishop comes here. <laughs> Trying to see if this will be... Well, from the position that we started, it is something. <laughs> yeah. Not, not too much, but... The point here is that after uh, this sacrifice, black is getting some, some counterplay. Actually, the way to go here would be to trade the bishop on g4 uh, with an idea like king f2 and bishop to f3. But just so you see that there is venom in this position, if white yeah. goes king f2, we also have this move here. Uh, if you started, you have uh, to and continue. Then... <laughs> and then... And then try to play queen f3, oh, okay. something here. Rook e8. Just sacrificing more material. <laughs> sacrificing more material and hoping for mm. counterplay. Yes. No, but really, it's it's not an easy position for white. If you want. No, to... I would. I would, I would um, hate to have the <laughs> white pieces. I wouldn't necessarily love to have the black pieces, but. You don't want the white pieces either. No, I think it's more fun. To right analyze now it. To be in, in blacks <laughs> in black shoes. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is that when you want to get the knight out, your rook is hanging on d1, so you're probably going to give back some material. 
Um, so if you don't want this happening, then white would have to play bishop d4, cutting the queen's uh, vision to e4, and then go king f2. Yeah. King f2 and bishop to f3, something like this. But I think, okay, we are it's analyzing. It's a pretty hard plan to find. That's what I, I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. We are looking at this. Uh, we have, well, I have analyzed it with the computer. I have looked at the position a little bit and imagine that you were playing this game. I think it would be <laughs> incredibly difficult to find all this over the board. Try to find a way to come out of this. White played queen c1, which prepares rook d4. Yeah, okay. And now he goes f5. I try to open the rook from e8 as well and create some weaknesses. Rook d4, back, and queen d2. What does white want after queen d2? Um, maybe just taking on d6, giving a little bit of uh, material back. And also the knight on c5 will then be probably lost, right? Because of the, uh, of the pin? Yeah. Yeah. The threat is rook d6 after queen d2. And the knight on c5 would also be hanging. So here, yeah. Topalov goes queen c7. Getting out of there. Bishop f2. Now you'll see how he calmly brings all the pieces out. Rook e6. Preparing rook e8. Just like that. Mm. As if we had an even material here. And we are <laughs> attacking on e4. <laughs> rook c4 and rook e8 also natural here. Knight e4. Okay, time to do something about the rook on e6. What are we going to do about the rook on e6 now? I mean, we only have so many options, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's unless similar there's to... a counter threat, but I don't really see that. Okay, so... We could put it back, but it doesn't seem like then we're blocking the bishop on f8. I don't know if that matters so much, but it just doesn't give us any time at least. Um, what if we take here? <laughs> He's going to take probably, I guess the knight is the least active piece right now. Mm -hmm. And then... Maybe... Take, take, take. I don't know. <laughs> we could also take with the knight on e5. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes. Sorry, where? Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. It was because I was looking at knight takes e5 because then ah, you e4. would be threatening the queen, but he can still take here because he also threatens the queen on c7. I think so, yeah. Um, I mean, otherwise we should play rook f6, uh, but I want to... This doesn't... F it, it feels more right to take on e4, but I'm going to look e4. in the chat and see. Oh, we have Juan David, nice to see you. Still Hello. following from Argentina. Argentina. Uh, no, we don't. What do you guys any... think? What should we do here? Oh, with rook, rook takes e4. Yes. Rook, rook takes e4. I saw that. And d5. Uh, d5. I haven't calculated d5. So okay, d5. But it doesn't make sense because he takes, takes and he still threatens the queen. That's the problem with the rook on hmm. on, on e6. And you probably have to take with the knight after that because the knight would be hang hanging. Or maybe d5 is not really working here. e4, okay, that's probably rook takes e4. Rook takes e4 <laughs> seems so weird. Yeah, we're already down one piece, but hey, if we've started. Yeah. No, basically we... here we don't 
have uh, we don't have a choice if we no it's like either we're down a rook and have active pieces or yeah. we're down uh, a piece and and, and have a cramped position yeah so. i have a horrible position that's exactly what this is about yeah. again so if you play rook e7 one thing that you should be worried about is e5 yeah the knight on c5 is hanging and if you play rook f6 uh, then e5 is still there bishop h4 is still there something like this but there is also a very strong idea here, which is knight to b5. And this. Yeah. Knight d5. e5. Horrible position again for black, right? Yeah, completely. So we don't want this. This is exactly what Topalo was trying to avoid. So here, if, if you want to avoid and have peace activity, rook e4. This is the theme of this game, peace activity. And we have seen this in, in other examples that I've, chose, uh, that I've chosen. Just to, I wanted to show you how he gets these complicated positions where, where he has chances. Takes here, f takes e4. And let's stop here for a moment because we are a whole rook down. <laughs> We only oh, have, few. have two pawns. Three pawns. <laughs> we have three pawns. We have three pawns. Oh, yeah, we have three pawns. No, so that's yeah. a lot of pawns already. Okay, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have three pawns. But then, as you were pointing out, Sophie, our pieces. Now we have to look at the pieces here. Mm. Our pieces are much better. The bishop on g4 is, well, looking good. <laughs> we're going to see how, how that's going to take us, where that's going to take us. But let's look at white's rooks. Uh, White has a rook up, but what is he going to do with the rooks? Yeah, they're not coordinated at all. They're not coordinated and the rooks, they need open files to be active. And yeah. that's not going to happen here because our central pawns, uh, this pawn will go to d5, the central will be closed and the rooks will not be active. Our bishop will come into play though. Bishop d6 mm -hmm. will be there. So there is a lot of compensation here for black. Um, what else? The knight on d4 is not, you'll see that it's not very stable either. It can be kicked out soon. So here he goes rook c3. He needs to do something about the rook and d5. I think this is much easier to play with black than with white. The moves come natural d5 is a natural move in this position. Bringing the bishop to d6 is also quite natural. Yeah, and putting maybe the rook on f8. Also very natural. Yeah. This is exactly what... These are the next moves. And you found them... Uh, yeah, it's just... You found them very fast. So natural, yeah. Bishop e3, defending. Okay, now he could have gone uh, rook f8, but... He's actually trying to avoid, I think queen d7 is meant to just avoid any rook takes g4 ideas he wants to take with the queen. So no, yeah. you know, he's a rook down, but he doesn't want the rook back. <laughs> Basically, we don't want anything back. c3 and now rook f8. This is like exactly yeah. the, the setup that you wanted to play for. White needs to keep defending, rook f1. What would be your next move here? Your next plan? Doesn't have to be a move. Mm. Um, I think it's... Our pieces are pretty... All pretty much ideal, uh, ideally placed right now. Yeah. So maybe I should be something with the pawns. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what. Like we could maybe go for something like uh, this, trying to create a passed pawn over here. Before but of I'm course, Sophie, it, no. <laughs> it does give it does give uh, White some some chances to to bring the rook over to the queen side. And so, I mean, it's not the best thing. Um, I think you don't want to leave to your open. center, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, so that the rooks remain bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe it's h four. H4 is 
I mean, it's, it's we can win the exchange if we want to. <laughs> but do we want to? I don't no. think you're winning it because g6 will be hanging also. Careful with that pawn on g6. Oh yeah, that's true. But maybe we could just keep pushing. <laughs> <laughs> and then he could go back. Uh, I don't know. No, I think here you and can there's... take more space and, and make uh, white's pieces worse. Because that pawn on h5, I feel like that pawn is giving you stability. Uh, for the bishop on g4. I don't think you need to touch it, at least for now. No. So you want to play this? So you want to play c5, I think. No, you want the knight out of d4. And then if the knight goes... Oh, okay, can't. I was thinking if it went somewhere to... No. Um... Yeah, and then the knight has to go maybe here. b5, yeah. Then we just move... Maybe put the bishop back on b8. But then your pawn on c5 will be hanging, right? Oh yeah, so we put it on... We put it on e7 instead? You could put it on e7 instead, or if you if you really want to play c5, nobody is making you play c5 right now. It's, it's funny is that black is in complete control here. So you can start with b6. And then play c5. Yeah, and d5 uh, is not. I don't think white can. No. I don't think white can uh, coordinate the pieces to attack d5 enough. No. Times. Because once the knight threatens the bishop, then when it move the bishop, then the queen is protecting d5. Yes, and d1 is not available. No. The bishop on g4 is a monster. Goes here, c5, knight b5. And here you can, well, bishop b8 is what he played, but the other move that you are suggesting, bishop e7, is also very strong, uh, because you might want this bishop on h4. Yeah. Really nice, no? How the pieces... Yeah. <laughs> how the pieces play together. Bishop b8, let's see the game, and now rook g2. It, I think white doesn't have much to do. Rook g2 is probably just preparing to take that bishop on g4 and force black to take with the h-pawn. Mm. But now the power of plays g5. And now rook takes g4 is not so strong anymore because we just take. And this doesn't work because here after g3 the rook on g2 is stuck forever. Is it forever? <laughs> Almost, no? <laughs> Almost, no. Yeah, okay. Because it can't go to... E2, because you we play mean? queen h3, maybe? Then? Queen h3, know. yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Nice. Queen h3 and okay. the threats on f1, threats on h2. Mm. It's kind of stuck for a long time. Okay, maybe yeah. not forever, but for the next uh, three, four months. Passive for now, <laughs> at least. Yeah. Queen h3 is coming next. So this looks like a very bad position for white anyway. This is not what white had in mind when he went for rook g2. So here he changes plans. Rook f2. Okay, so what to do now with black? No, the, the pawn on g5 is still untouchable because the rook on g3 is hanging. We have this bishop on b8 doing a great job. Yes. Why does it really have a threat? So in these positions where you, you are in complete control, your opponent doesn't do anything, uh, you don't have to force matters, but you can try and improve your position even more, not to the maximum. That's one of the things I, I really think is, is hardest in it just to know when you have to act quickly Stop, and, yeah. and and when you just have to be like oh like adjust <laughs> a little bit and oh, i don't I, I wouldn't even know where to because the pieces are pretty well placed so it's kind of minor details we it is have a to minor change. detail yeah i agree yeah. it is a very small detail your pieces are in good places the rook on fa is fine the bishop on b8 is fine the queen is fine the bishop's fine 
but the king could be better. <laughs> yes, okay, could be. But, yeah, okay. King g7, and he wants the king on g6. It's not clear that this will help a lot, but it's an improvement in the position. And why not play it if he can do it, no? Taking on yeah. g5 is not a threat because then we take on g3, right? The rook on f8 is still defended. Yeah, we have plenty of pawns to give uh, as long as we get something in return. Yeah, right. We have three of them. Oh, wait, maybe it is actually uh, a threat because the rook on f8 will also be hanging. Yeah, if you go king g6. Yeah. Uh, like exactly when you go king g6, you mean it might be a threat. Yeah. But for now, it's not a threat. So we can go okay. king g7. Queen c1. And uh, I just see somebody asking who's playing, and this is Carlos uh, Tupalov with the Tupalov with the black pieces, and who has the white pieces here? Karlov, Andrei Karlov. Karlov, yeah, go from. Yes. Yeah, and also somebody is asking uh, where we are from, and uh, I am from in a, Denmark. In a, in a more or less uh, nice way. <laughs> in a more or less nice way. <laughs> oh no, there is both. <laughs> One is asking in a little bit uh, uh, provocative way, and one is asking in a nicer way. So we have two. But yeah, and, and Raluca is from uh, Romania, where I was just a few days ago, uh, just got back to Denmark. Yeah. Let's go back yeah. to our Queen C1. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> Queen C1, and here he goes King G6. And here you were asking about pawn takes G5. No, I think we can always take that rook on g3 like take on f2 and take on oh we take on f2 first i'm thinking unless i'm missing anything so if takes here you are looking at this you want to give me the rook on g3 oh, but can, can you um refresh oh or? maybe you here so what sophie wants is for me to take the rook so she can take my rook on f8. Yes. <laughs> so what options do we have? I have rook f2, which seems like a then very obvious. Rook f2, bishop then takes. The bishop takes and covers the but Okay. I have h4 at that point. Queen rook g2. And... What else do I have? I have here. Rook f2 and h4 maybe. Try to get your rook for free. Rook g2. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, get your idea in play with h3. And then if the rook goes back to g3, mm -hmm. then... I was, I was thinking maybe take then and something like queen f5. Let's show this because it's... Yeah, it's so getting a little Everybody bit see this here and I'm thinking this, rook g2. And I was looking at h3 here. There's also... No, queen f5, I don't think... No, h4 is hanging, right? If queen f5. There's bishop h3, but I was hoping to get that rook. I mean, bishop f3. Oh, but that's actually pretty nice, because bishop f3... I'm going to get queen g4 in, right? How? After bishop f3, bishop g2, my queen is getting on g4. Once this rook is gone. Ah. That might be something, because now with a dark square bishop, can be dangerous. Yeah, now also we have uh, two passes that are like, yeah. pretty far advanced. <laughs> yeah, and my, my point was that here this is, does not work, because then you're going to take here and win the bishop with queen g4. Yeah. And if I get that, it's it's over. So not bishop h4, but what? I'm still going to take on g2 and, and queen g4. Mm. I think this is convincing. Yeah. 
Now, so he goes queen, queen f1 here. And I think now after queen f1, uh, well, at least that's what I thought, that here pawn takes g5 was a threat. Because on the same line, mm. white gets to take with the queen. Yeah. So it's not the same anymore. So the power of plays rook f5. Prophylaxis, enough time. Yes. Queen takes g5 after bishop f3 doesn't work. Queen takes g5 after bishop f3. Hold on, we had some suggestions here yeah. in the chat that I, I wasn't looking at. I was very focused on, on the line here. So let's see here. h4, tack, bishop f3. Queen takes g5. Wait, when queen takes g5? After bishop f3. Queen h3 was also... Okay, why not queen h3? Okay, maybe queen h3 is... Is also working. Bishop h4, queen h3. Sure, yeah, queen h3 is also winning. But yeah. I just... I thought the other one is... Forcing enough. And queen takes g5? I'm not sure when. Probably... After bishop f3. Yes, but we don't have the queen queen takes g5. And then, yeah, queen h3. I see Miguel's suggestion now with queen h3 as well. And rook f3. <laughs> White knight is almost out of the game. Yeah, the white knight is almost out of the game. That's that's something uh, that I've noticed as well in when I was watching this game. Yeah, black is winning. <laughs> It was always complicated. It was always complicated. No, but the game was actually queen f1 here and rook f5. Now, if the f takes g5, we have bishop g3, so this is not a problem anymore. And he played rook g2. And at this point, we have many good moves, like bishop h3, you can get the, the exchange back. But obviously, this is not what black was searching for in this game. <laughs> We saw no. that he didn't, he doesn't value very much his rooks here. So he goes for queen f7. He wants to take an f4, right? He wants to take on f4, I think, yes. I think that's a big threat now. Why he needs to take? And here. Uh -uh. Rook h2. Okay. If you insist, he takes this one. And what do you think he plays now? <laughs> Black to play. Sounds like it's like the final, one of the final moves. Uh, yeah, it's one of the final out. moves. <laughs> I, I mean, you have a very good uh, position. It's not an only move, but how would you play? Something with the bishop. Uh, <laughs> something with the bishop so that the queen is under attack. Mm, maybe, maybe bishop h1. But then the queen moves. Mm. Bishop g4. Again, the queen moves away. Uh, d4 doesn't make any sense. It takes with the pawn and then with the knight. So that looks good for white. Um, <laughs> Can I move my bishop somewhere so that the queen? Oh, I mean, if I play, yeah. Alicia has it. In the Alicia, chat. I'm gonna yes. go see. Uh, Vessel Yankov. Uh, oh, asking... I also see uh, Uno in the chat or Rolf in the chat. Uno D4. is in the chat. I didn't see him. <laughs> no, Uno, I don't like D4. Um, okay. <laughs> Rook f4. Rook f4. And Vesel Yanko was asking us who's playing. Uh, here we're looking at games of uh, Topalov today. And this is mm -hmm. just the last one. It's just the, the the final part of his game against Karlov. Yeah, offer okay. a draw. I don't think Topalov was going to offer a draw here, no. 
Luke F4 uh, definitely threatens to go to G4, so white would have to take. And then what is, uh, is white then just not able to defend after we take back oh, F4? White is able to defend, but it's very difficult to defend. Uh, ah, I'm just okay. saying that here you have many moves. Rook F4 is obviously uh, in the spirit of the game. Uh, but Queen E7, a move like this is not bad either. Uh, if you want to play with Queen E5. No? Yeah. This is also threatening Rook G5. And maybe bring the Queen in. But also an idea with Queen E5 is there. So you, you could also play this way. But Rook F4 is just uh, impressive to to sacrifice a second rook. Topalo versus Karlov, Andrei Karlov, or Harlov. I'm not sure how how you read this exactly, but it's K-H-A-R-L-O-V. Bishop takes, queen takes, and here the only defense was queen H3. But it's still not obvious how you're gonna to go into defend. Mm. Right, yeah, I was just saying that queen uh, e6 uh, was probably a threat. Yeah, but uh, queen e6 is not doing anything now. And if um, white goes for something like rook g2 now, then we just take and say that our pawns are worth more than the knight? We could do that for sure. <laughs> We could definitely do that. Takes with the queen, right? What do you want to take with? Queen takes. Uh, I was actually like, uh, 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 oh yeah, I guess queen takes, so it would check. So I move my king then, away? Yeah, or maybe, unless queen g4 is, is winning. But I don't know if it is. No, I'm but not sure if it's winning, but with the queen it's probably just winning. Yeah, that's true. No, here there is a defense, but it's very difficult. Rook f2, uh, and the point is that he wants to play b4 at some point. Definitely not <laughs> a resource that <laughs> okay. that's easy to see. So it, like queen h3 was the only move here, but it was not an obvious idea at all. No. He played rook g2 in the game, uh, but this allows the pawns to advance, so after h4... It's game over. <laughs> and the other one. And take this one now. And h3. And what does it just say about the pawns? That once, I think it's connected pawn, that if you have two connected pawns on the sixth rank, then it's worth a rook. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this time they're not connected, but they're still. Worth a rook. <laughs> Worth a rook. <laughs> well, the king's uh, weakness is also yeah. a part of it. So here, rook h3, there's queen g2 mate. He gave a check on b1, bishop b4, and then after <laughs> bishop. <laughs> Can anyone explain to me what is going on? Um, well, what went on is that uh, Topalo sacrificed all his pieces and finally won the game, <laughs> basically. Great. <laughs> with only short three version. Pawns. short version of this game uh, but no we were looking at Topalo's games uh, today this was our final uh, game well after our final player of the King Hands series where we were seeing attacking games uh, maybe we'll come back to it because there are many players that we haven't seen but for now we're going to take a short break from attacking games yeah Rook G7. I have to see something else <laughs> <laughs> just to see a little uh, other things. Bishop e2 doesn't work because white trades queen for rook and bishop. Is bishop g2 stupid? I think uh, all these questions were asked in this position. Bishop g2, I think uh, white just takes it. So none... Uh, I don't think any... Don't I just take with the queen? We don't have rook f1. That's a, that's a problem. How do you defend out of curiosity in that position? I, I don't know if I would be able to defend in this position after queen h3. But I think it's like a like a, how the computer would... Uh, or, yeah. But apparently after rook f2, the computer wants to defend with b4. 
and create some counterplay on this side. Create a past pawn on the faro, and I'm but it's still not very sure much. Now. Uh, no, I think it's an engine defense, not I a human so. no, defense. No. no, I don't think it's very human at all. No. But maybe the point is that here with black, you don't. Uh, how are you going to make progress? Maybe that's that's a point. Because you can play h4, but then. But then what? No. Maybe it's just not enough. Maybe because e3 can be pushed. No. Mm. So I'm thinking that this could be like a fortress. Sort of a fortress for white. And if black pushes too too far, it's going to be winning for white. Yeah. But basically, uh, well, the point of rook a queen h3, in my opinion, now seeing that rook g2, the problem was that the pawns advance. No? Uh, mm. In my opinion, now seeing how the game went, queen h3 and rook f2 is a way of stopping the pawns from advancing. And that's why this could be a position that uh, you can defend. Yeah, just blockade the pawns. Just blockade the pawns, yeah. Not allow black to make any more progress. I think that's yeah. that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't see anything else about this. It's just that that you don't allow the pawns to make to go further. Okay. Anything else? I think it's a great game. It's a little different from the other uh, because it's not exactly a king hunt, but it's more like a king pressure. King pressure, yeah, that's well put. <laughs> it's not a king hunt, but it's creating pressure out of nowhere, yeah. no? Alicia is saying uh, Peter Swidler would be nice, but I think we, we, uh, we're trying a, a new series that's not about king hunts. Yeah, but um, of course we have Swidler, we had Morosevich as a suggestion also, and there yeah. are many players that we haven't seen, like Yobava, like Rapport attacking players so that's why i'm thinking that maybe at some point we can revisit this <laughs> and add some new games yes well thank you all very much that was that's all for today hope you've enjoyed topalov's games and i invite you to see uh, other games of his he has many beautiful ones many nice uh, exchange sacrifices positional exchange sacrifices he has an absolute superb win against Kasparov with the white pieces in a Sicilian, uh, where he has a knight that travels all the way to c6, d8, f7. <laughs> but unfortunately, although the, the, the beginning was an attacking game and it was very beautiful, the game lasted like 50-something moves and he, he eventually won an endgame, so I couldn't bring it to you today. Oh. It wasn't really uh, a real king hand, but it is, it is a beautiful attacking game. And uh, yeah, that will be all for today. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. And hope to see you guys next week.